Hi! What's up, delinquents? Today, we're going to talk about braggers. We're going to talk about people that are not worth your time. We're going to talk about just sad, random fucking thoughts. And we're going to talk about life. I'd like to welcome all the old delinquents, as well as all the new. My name's Sarge, and this is the Gray Area. Humans are such easy prey. This isn't funny anymore! I know. I know. It's been a while. It's been a little bit, but there was the fucking holidays, and it's the 4th of July, and I hope everybody had a good Independence Day, and you guys celebrated freedom like a bald eagle looking off at the horizon, just knowing how much freedom is to be expected within America for the next thousands of thousands of years, if we make it past the next four. We shall see. (laughs) <laughs> we shall see. I hope everybody enjoyed their holiday. I took a little bit of a hiatus. I talked with my hands there like I was an old grandma from New York. I took a little bit of a hiatus. I was on vacay and I was just experiencing freedom like the rest of us. Like a bald eagle with a tear in my eye. Just loving freedom. Like a true American. And uh, talking about freedom, let's talk about the World Cup just for a little bit here. Okay, so the World Cup, uh, right before the 4th of July, England went against America, and we whooped that ass. America whooped that ass. So to all my English listeners out there, it was a good match. You got some goals taken away from you. You got the offsides taken. It sucks. I know. And then we had Morgan, one of our players. She fucking scored a goal. She looked at the crowd. She did the fucking I'm sipping a cup of tea thing. And she just, you know, dragged the English through the mud, really. So (laughs) right on the 4th of July, too. Oh, man, I bet going to work the next day must have sucked for the English that watch soccer. Not football, soccer, because that's what we call it. Because we can call it whatever we want, because we are the world fucking champions in soccer yes we beat the netherlands too and that was great and that brings me to the other thing which is my random thought of the week okay so we're it's just we go from one spectrum to the other spectrum when it comes to soccer we play england in the semifinals. we beat them it was a knuckle drag out brawl thing going on it was back and forth they could have won it we could have won it it was great and it's in you know 243 years since our independence from england and i just thought it was just bittersweet and it was fucking sick and it was great and it was great right so we beat them and then we beat the Netherlands, and we're all being patriotic and stuff, because we just beat the, the Netherlands like three days ago on whatever the fuck. Just look up the World Cup finals match for 2019, and that's what, exactly what I'm talking about. And so we're sitting there, and we're celebrating, and the team's celebrating, and I'm hearing all this news that that, that Rapineau chick was like, I'm not going to the White House, fuck him, yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. It's not who's in the White House. It's the fact that the White House is a symbol of America and Americans want you to be representing America in a bigger light. Not only that, some, uh, what is her name? Allie Long. All right. I know that she was excited and everything was going on. But before you have finals matches, before you have any match, before you join the Olympics, before you represent your fucking country, you have a class. Whether it's 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 20 minutes, and the class is called United States Flag Etiquette, okay? That motherfucker doesn't drag on the ground. That motherfucker doesn't get dropped on the ground. This dumb bitch fucking dropped it on the ground and purposely or not fucking stepped on it before one of the other soccer players is like, fuck, no, and she grabbed it and snatched it off the ground because she knows that it's not supposed to touch the fucking ground. Many more, many people, many, many people, women, children, men, heroes, died for that flag that you just disrespected. You play a fucking sport. You're an entertainer. You're a clown. That's what you are. You represent our country. Great. That's great. And when it comes to, like, 
pop culture and shit like that, you, you know, represent us. You are an entertainer. It's pretty much, you know, no difference than a stripper, really. We go and we watch strippers and strippers are cool. And whether they're guys or girls, you entertain us. We're not turning you. We're not turning you on because we're not watching you because you know we care about the sport of fucking soccer. Because we don't. I mean, there are a select few that do. But you're representing America, and you're there to entertain. And we, as Americans, like watching other countries lose to us because we are the big-headed alpha male or female now of the world. And now we are the fucking champions. So next time. Next time you win, and you win, will win again, because this is like your fourth World Cup in recent years, right? You're going to drop that fucking flag, and shit should be fucking... There should be, re, there should be repercussions for it. Be like, oh, I don't want to go to the White House. And then you accidentally, air quotes, drop the fucking flag. Fuck that. It's, it's, it's a random thought. I know you were just doing a photo op, and you didn't want the flag in the picture and stuff like that, but I don't know. Something's going on. I don't care. Is it a conspiracy theory? Maybe. Was she just caught in the moment and she wasn't thinking about it? Just something in her hand that she wanted to drop that knowing it was a flag? Possibly. I'm just bringing it up to the public, to the delinquents, because we do not disrespect the flag because it represents more than a fucking soccer club. Okay? There we go. Now, talking about flags, that brings me to my what What? What? in the the actual actual fuck? fuck. Topic of the week, which kind of correlates to my random thought regarding the soccer flag thing, but it's a little bit different. So, Nike, okay? Fucking Nike. I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if they're trying to be like, hey, we're so fucking huge. We got Michael Jordan. We got Zion Williamson, whose fucking shoe blew out, by the way. Fucking those kids in China, they don't, they don't know how to make a quality shoe anymore. Anyway, Nike's like, hey, what can we possibly do to just drag our name through the mud just to prove that people are still going to buy our shit? I know. We could take advice from fucking Colin Kaepernick. You fucking idiots. What in the actual fuck, Nike? Okay, so Nike was going to do a shoe and it was going to be a special release for the 4th of July, right? Now. Going back in history here, Betsy Ross, Revolutionary War era, anti-slavery chick, anti-slavery chick, made the flag, okay? It had stars in a circle in the blue, right? Because obviously we didn't have 50 states yet, and it still had the 13, you know, the, the red and white alternating stripes, 13, right? 13 original colonies, 13 stars on the blue, Revolutionary War. It was pretty much America's first fucking flag. Really. Created by someone who was completely anti-slavery. They were going to release it for, you know, the uh, anniversary of, you know, the... Not anniversary, but like the birthday of America. July 4th. You know? It's because we're 240-something years old now. So they're like, okay, we're going to do a Betsy Ross edition Nike flag shoe. And, um... Colin Kaepernick was like, uh, uh, that's, that's oppressive. That's, that's oppressive because that flag represents, uh, pretty much, uh, slavery. And, uh, I, uh, I would kneel if I still played football, but, um, the NFL read through all my bullshit and, uh, I don't have the opportunity to, uh, play football anymore. So, uh, I just grow my hair out, uh, the helmet wouldn't even fit on me, uh, anyway, uh, uh, anti, it's, it's, it's pretty much pro, uh, slavery, and, uh, we shouldn't make those shoes. His fucking parents, by the way, are white. I just want to be clear. They raised him. Okay? And I understand that he's, you know, an African-American guy and he's against the fucking police brutality thing. I'm not, this isn't even the kneeling police brutality thing that I'm bringing up. This is the fact that he absolutely has no fucking idea what the fuck he is talking about. He is saying that the Betsy Ross flag representing the Revolutionary War and our win over England directly correlates to slavery and um, anti-African-American ideals and pro-slavery. Not knowing. Does this motherfucker read a book? I don't think he does. 
I don't think he does. It's not even the fact that he has no idea what the fuck he's talking about because Betsy Ross, the woman that created the fucking flag, was anti-slavery. All right? That's not even the thing. Colin Kaepernick... Blah, blah, blah. I, I don't even want to say his fucking name. Fuck that guy. Colin is a piece of shit. Okay? Not only is he a piece of shit, but Nike is like, you know what? You know, we have a board of you know, directors, and we have marketing, and we had advertisement, but let's just listen. Let's just listen to him. Let's just do what he says. What kind of pull pull does fucking Colin Kaepernick have that Nike is going to be like, you know what, we're not going to take, we're not going to release the, the Betsy Ross shoe. We're not going to release the fucking Betsy Ross shoe. And that just fucking blows my fucking mind. So now everyone's like, fuck Nike. And then everyone's like, yeah, go Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, it represents slavery. Those people are representatives of the times that, you know, I mean, we can't go back in fucking time 240 something years ago and be like, no, no, slavery is bad. Yeah, obviously fucking slavery is bad. We fucking figured that out with the Civil War. That's gone. But now there's fucking everyone's trying to be like, oh, we just erase it from our fucking history. How are people going to know about the hate and the bigotry and the difference? You guys are trying to, like, rewrite history books and be like, oh, that represents a time when blah, 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 blah. Does it, though? It was written by... It, th that flag was made by a woman that was anti-slavery. Read a fucking book, okay? You stupid fucks. It drives me absolutely fucking donkey. It just... I'm donk... I want to... I, I just... I'm, I'm an idiot. I just want to hee-haw all the way to fucking... The, I just... Mm, I can't think. I can't think. I'm not going to edit that shit out. Because... My mind is on fire, all right? So everyone's like, all right, we're going to go against Nike. Fuck Nike. And then everybody's going to be, and then people are going to be like, no, yeah, go Nike. Yeah, anti-slavery, blah, blah, blah. Listen to Colin Kaepernick. Fuck Colin Kaepernick. Me personally, I'm like, fuck Nike. Fuck Colin Kaepernick. But on the other end of things, there's Breitbart, right? Who is, you know, right side of the aisle sort of thing. I normally agree with most of the shit they have to say. <laughs> So Breitbart decided to be like, you know what, we're going to boycott Nike too, but, you know, they don't understand that, you know, Betsy Ross was actually anti-slavery and we're going to release a fucking flip-flop that you could buy for Breitbart to sponsor Breitbart and, you know, get Breitbart out there, which is like a news organization that leans a little bit to the right. Okay, but listen to what these fucking guys did. Okay, I got to throw my own people under the bus too. It, in my opinion, is it as bad as Colin Kaepernick and Nike, you know, do it, like pulling fucking shoes off the shelf? No. But they're actually making sandals flip-flops, right? Betsy Ross flip-flops. And the flag is the, the sole of the fucking flip-flop that you're literally standing on, that you're walking on. Okay. <laughs> so the Nike shoe, the sole was like a normal rubber sole, right? a rubber heel and the, 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 the flag was on the, the flag was on the heel and the stars and the bars were along the shoe and you weren't, you weren't stepping on the flag. Breitbart opens up fucking sandals and flip flops and they put the fucking <laughs> Betsy Ross flag and the circle where the heel is and the, and the stripes going down to your toes and you walk on it all day. You're literally standing on the fucking flag and it's supposed to be patriotic. What in the actual fuck? <laughs> I can't. I can't. I could do your jobs better than you can. Like, it's one of those things where it's that blatantly obvious. You guys need to do, like, a common sense survey. And before you listen to fuck dumb shits like Colin Kaepernick or Breitbart decides to make a shoe where you're literally walking on the flag all day, you guys need to do a common sense, like, survey, bring it into a room full of fucking normal fucking people and be like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And they're going to be like, uh, walking on the flag is probably not the best idea. And they'll look at the fucking Nike shoe and they'll be like, you know what? That's a badass shoe. Awesome. Sell it. But now we're going to listen to fucking people that have zero experience in fucking marketing. Or we're going to be so fucking patriotic that we are going to overlook the fact that we're walking on fucking the American flag on flip-flops all day. You fucking idiots. And that was my what What? What? In the, what? In the actual, actual fuck, 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 fuck topic of the week. Moving forward, let's talk about people that we absolutely fucking hate, but we do it all the time anyway. Whether we're talking about our kids, whether we're talking about ourselves, finances, or your car, people fucking brag all the time. Whether they do it subconsciously or, you know, unannounced to anyone else, they're just sort of seeming to bring themselves into 
conversations that don't really involve them. You're sitting there venting about your life. You're sitting there talking about this, that, or the other thing. You're just, you know, you know, normal conversation. And then they jump in or they're listening or they interrupt the fucking sentence and be like, well, I did this or I did this or when I was this age. And they're just trying to one up. you be like, yeah, I'm sorry your life sucks, but let's make it worse by telling you how great I have it. And I'm talking about fucking braggers. Braggers are everywhere. I'm guilty of it. I fucking done it. I know I've done it. I see people do it all the time and I try to look at them like, uh, just gonna, maybe they don't know they're doing it. Maybe they, maybe they don't know they're actually trying to make people feel worse about their current situations. Like, uh, I got a friend and, you know, f- friends all the time, they'll, they'll always brag about stupid shit, especially when they have like brand new kids. Like, oh, he's so smart. Oh, oh my God, she's going to be such a genius. Oh, she's already reading. Oh my God, my kid walked when he was like three months, which is <laughs> fucking, which is fucking impossible. But they'll be like, oh, my kid was admitted to a very elite preschool. Were they really admitted to a very elite preschool? Because very elite preschools cost fucking money. And you're pretty much saying not only is your kid smart like overly smart but you have the money to send them to an overly smart preschool or elite preschool they see it's a it's a twofer they're so good at bragging that they're like oh my kid is so exceptional so that's the one that they were admitted to a elite preschool that's two which means my kid's smart and i have money but people that can read through bullshit which would be me, read it as, okay, your kid's not smart, you just have money. Or you actually know the person long enough to be like, yeah, you don't make money, so I'm pretty sure your parents are paying for this because you still live in their fucking basement. Whatever. Either way, they'll be like, my kid was admitted to a very elite preschool. And I'm just sitting there like, cool, my kid's, you know, just saying love shack with the words, but they changed it to ball sack, so... <laughs> I just take <laughs> I just take what they say and I just, you know, make a joke out of it. People that go to fucking elite schools and private schools or even fucking home schools, they become socially fucking awkward when they get older. Meanwhile, my kids in the back just be like, ball sack, baby ball sack, ball sack, baby ball sack. <laughs> what, who are you going to want to hang out with? Someone that changes the words to love sack to ball sack or someone who's got a fucking... 170 IQ and went to MIT. Yeah, has a pocket protector when they go to the bar. They still order fucking, oh, what's it called? What's it called? Uh, Sherry. Uh, fucking, it's, you got, oh, God. It's got no alcohol in it, but kids order it because they want to think that they're drinking. They want to feel like they're drinking. Uh, fucking shit. What is it called? It's got cherries in it. It's named after, ah, Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple. First of all, those things are delicious anyway. But I don't even know where I was going. I went off on a little bit of a tangent. But, you know, here we go. Moving forward. Braggers are just the fucking devil, okay? Absolute freaking devil. I can't... We all we all run into them. We all know them. We all have listened to their stories from front to back. And you don't want to be mean, you know? You don't want to be, you know, the guy that's like, you just shut the fuck up. Because you're cordial, and you're mature, and you're a fucking adult, and you don't want to seem rude. When in fact, they're subconsciously, or actually doing it, doing it on purpose, being rude to you. And making you feel lesser of a human being, which you should never let that happen. You should just, just fucking just sit there, just nod, and be like, oh, yeah, oh, good for you, oh, fantastic. Oh, you spent $8,000 to take your kids to Disney, oh, fantastic. My son watched the fucking garbage truck... Empty our trash like 20 minutes ago, and he's still fucking talking about it. That is my, uh, that's always my comeback. My, my comeback is always like, oh, they talk about this and how much money it's going to cost, and I talk about something that's complete opposite, that m- costs absolutely nothing, <laughs> that my kids still talk about. Oh, your kid did this. Oh, your kid's going to elite school. Oh, you spent this much money on Disney. Oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. My kid is looking at a dead bird in the front yard, and he is 
in shock. Like, he just fucking loves it. Remember that time? Remember that time? Your kids forget about Disney the week after they get back, and they're all sad, and they're sitting there staring at their fucking tablet. My kid brings it up, like, fucking three months later. Do you remember the time I had a, the bird? You think it's in heaven? Oh, I'm so sad. I miss you, Stripes. He fucking names the dead things. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm bragging about my, how <laughs> low maintenance my kid is. You know, I don't know. It's 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 a give and take. It's a give and take, people. A lot of the bragging that we hear as adults comes from, like, other parents. But they don't want to brag to people that don't have children because they won't be able to understand or possibly get jealous to the fact of how you're totally sacrificing for the betterment of your child and how smart your child is or how much money you're spending on fucking vacations. If they don't have kids, they're not going to understand that. So you're always going to have those fucking parents out there that brag about, oh, my kid, I could do this. And that's where the majority of bragging comes from when you're an adult, which makes sense, okay? Like, I give my kids TV time and screen time, and they learn shit from watching tablets that maintain their attention that I could never give them because I really don't have the fucking time in my day to do all that shit, okay? I have to work. I have to come home. I have to, like, do dinners and stuff. I'm I'm a stay-at-home dad with a job. Or stay-at-home mom with a fucking job. It, it's all over the fucking place. So we need to occupy their minds while we do something else. We're not going to put on, like, you know, rated R fucking shows or whatever the fuck. But, like, sure. I, I'm sure I could parent without screen time. But I could also fucking churn my own fucking butter. Okay? I'm not going to go crazy here. All right? <laughs> Adults need their time, too. We don't have fucking nannies, okay? Kim, Kardashian, all right? All the fucking Kardashians out there. Everyone's saying, like, oh, look, Cardi B, the first year of her being a mother, she did so well. Did she, though? Did she, though? I mean, does she even know what her kid looks like? I guarantee fucking to you that ha- that, that, that baby has a 24-7 fucking nanny. 24 fucking 7. And that kid is saying mom to her. Or him, because, you know, guys could be nannies too, all right? I don't judge. Oh, she's such a great mom. Meanwhile, you got single moms out there with deadbeat fucking sperm donor dads that just fucking take off. They're working two fucking jobs, taking care of the kid, putting it through fucking daycare, living in a fucking shack. Those are the moms that busted their ass. Not the fucking... Not the fucking rappers or fucking celebrities like the fucking Kardashians or Cardi B's that take advantage of fucking society because they did a sex tape once upon a time. What is it what, what is it with fucking pop culture, you know, becoming famous because they were on their knees once upon a time? Oh, I was on my knees once upon a time, blowing this guy, blowing that guy, kneeling during a fucking national anthem. I'm talking to you, Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. There's real people in the real world busting their ass a lot fucking harder than any of those celebrities out there and putting in way more fucking effort, okay? So don't give any fucking credit to mothers that make millions of fucking dollars because their music fucking sucks and pop culture doesn't even fucking realize it. And I'm going off on a tangent. So back on track. Back on track, Sarge. Back on track. You got those people out there that are, like, just too good for the normals of society. Too good for, you know... The norms and the standard, it's beneath them. Like, you know, people that wear jeans that cost less than 500 bucks, people that take public transportation, you know, people that work more than two jobs, people that do dirty jobs like fucking garbage collecting or, you know, trash compacting or they work in a fucking waste dump or, you know, water sanitation or they're a fucking plumber or an electrician or blue collar fucking worker, the people that actually get their hands fucking dirty and earn their fucking paycheck and actually earn gratitude to society and actually have a fucking purpose. Those people, you got, I mean, you you got those people to be like, oh my God, I wouldn't even touch that with like a 10 foot pole. First of all, bitch, you would. Do you know how much weird shit you would touch with a 10 foot pole? I would touch all kinds of weird shit with a 10 foot pole. Maybe, maybe even a five foot pole. I don't even know. Fuck it. Especially all you pervs out there. You know what I mean? Could you just imagine what you guys would do with all the fucking weird shit that if if nobody was looking if nobody was watching if you weren't going to get caught could you imagine all the weird shit that you guys could get into yeah see see you hide it well like in reality let's 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 be clear okay society 
All right, my delinquents, listen up. Females are way bigger fucking perverts than men. Don't be fooled. They just fucking hide it better. And that comes from the heart. <laughs> I'm not trying to I'm not trying to insult women or anything, but you guys are fucking freakier than us. I don't know if there's like like I said in previous podcasts, I don't know if it's like a cultural shift or we're becoming more feminine and you're becoming more masculine, but you guys are bigger freaks and bigger perverts than we are. This is true. This is true. And I'm going off on a tangent again. Fuck my life. Moving forward. Today in history. Today in history for July 11th of any fucking year. Today I have chosen 1804. The Burr-Hamilton duel. This thing's fucking huge. I love this. I love that it just happens to be something on the day that I decide to do a today in history or a day that I you know, decided to do a podcast that something worth actually fucking talking, talking about has actually happened. I mean, there's been so much shit throughout history that every day should have some sort of relevant, cool thing to talk about. But I mean, there was like a whole bunch of dumb shit that happened to the French in like the 1300s and Napoleon was attacked once upon a time by some people and that was to no avail and then i was like okay this is no one's gonna give a fuck about any topic and then i got to this and then i remember the fucking commercial where he calls in right it was a got milk commercial you guys know what i'm talking about right he calls in he is part he works at the aaron burr like museum and and they ask him the question he's like hey who shot alexander hamilton um, July 11th, 1804. And this guy works in the Aaron Burr Museum, right? But he just took a bite of like a peanut butter and s- peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> and he can't answer the question because he's just like, because he can't. And then it was like, got milk? Perfect. Perfect commercial. So maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. So the Aaron Burr Alexander Hamilton duel was fought in Week Hawking. Weehawken, New Jersey, over there, over there in Weehawken, between Vice President Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton, the former Secretary of Treasury. It occurred on January, no, stupid, no, 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 it's July. I'm not going to edit it out because I'm a human being, okay? Okay, 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 okay. It occurred on July 11th, 1804. And was the culmination of a very long and bitter rivalry between the two men. Vice President Aaron Burr shot Hamilton while Hamilton's shot broke a tree branch directly above Burr's head. Hamilton was carried to the home of William Baynard Jr., where he died the next fucking day. God, not only do you challenge a guy to a duel, okay, and then you fucking lose the duel. That you're sure not you're not supposed to fucking die from it. Okay, this is like, like old school pistols. This is 1804. It's fucking 214 years ago. <laughs> With what are the name of the pistols? Wagdon pistols. Is that what they're called? Yeah, Alexander Hamilton, one of the founding fathers of the United States, challenged a motherfucker, lost, died the next day. Yeah. Whatever happened to that? Why can't we do that shit anymore? Now everyone's just talking shit on the internet, you know? Or even talking shit face to face. And then when someone fucking raises fists, right? Knuck if you buck, right? You gotta talk all that shit. You gotta put your knuckles up? No. But when they do, that motherfucker goes to jail for fucking defending himself? God. We have become very pansetic in today's society. Alright? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Today in history's topic also brings me to the topic that we are fucking pussies. All right? And I don't want to call people pussies because pussies could take a beating. We all know this. Just pansetic, you know? You're pansy and you're fucking pathetic. If you're going to talk shit, you better have the fucking, you know, bite to bark it up. You're all bark, no bite. You're nucking, but you're not bucking. You know what I mean? You're, you're bucking, but you're not nucking. Nuck if you buck. Look up the song. Nuck if you buck. Okay? Great song. It's by Crime Mob... Nuck if you buck. K-N-U-C-K. That's how you spell nuck. You should know how to spell buck. Okay? 
it's pretty much a song about like if you're gonna talk shit you better be able to back it up and that's it that's it it takes us back to when men were fucking men you know alexander hamilton got his ass fucking shot and he died the next day because he they had a fucking disagreement and instead of fucking talking shit all over the place and spreading fucking rumors and going behind the internet and doing all this shit and you know making rumors up and spreading bad fucking vibes to the whole fucking world of society they decided to be like you know what me you next day duel pistol duel done it's over (laughs) all right moving forward i want to talk about people that are not worth your fucking time all right People that don't deserve the time of day, they do not deserve any of your acknowledgement whatsoever. You guys need to weed out the bullshit and the fucking people that are not worth your time. Nobody is busier than a person that's not interested in you, okay? They, they, you might be interested in them, but they might not be interested in you. These people are not worth your time. They'll be like, oh, let me, uh, let me, uh. I left the fridge open. Let me let me close the fridge real quick. I'm gonna I'll call you back. I'll call you back. And they don't. They don't call you back. They are not worth your time. Another example of a person that is not worth your time is like people who try to expose what is wrong with you. They'll always bring up, oh, maybe you should try this, maybe you should do this differently, maybe you should change this about yourself. They try to expose what's wrong with you from their perspective, which is completely fucked up. Because they can't handle what is right with you. It's like they want to bring you down. Like the braggers. Like I, like I said. Those people that try to fix you or whatever the fuck. They try to expose what is wrong with you. Air quotes in their opinion. They are not worth your fucking time. Another. Another example of people that are not worth your time are exes. Like let me talk about exes here for a second. Uh, ex-boyfriends. Ex-girlfriends ex-friends, whatever, BFFs, not whatever, doesn't matter, friends with benefits. Those people that, like, they try to get into your good graces or the you guys have broken up plenty of times or they're just trying to have sex with you for a place to stay because they, <laughs> they have nowhere to live, you know? You need, y- y'all need to stop having sex for a place to stay, okay? You damn homeless sexuals. <laughs> homeless sexuals. Oh, my God. I read that and I thought it was pretty fucking funny. But it, it's accurate. Because there are a lot of people out there be like, oh, man, I have no place to sleep tonight. Oh, man, I have no place to go. Oh, and you call up your fucking exes because you know their weaknesses. You know how to push their buttons. Those people, not worth your fucking time. They're not worth your time. You already figured out they're full of shit. You already figured out they're fucking garbage. You've already filtered them through your life and put them into the fucking trash compactor. And they're gone. And now they're coming back. No, 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 no. Get rid of them. You don't need them in your life either. Now, there are people that aren't worth your time in real life that you have no history with whatsoever. They're not trying to hit on you. You have no history with them. They're just a complete fucking stranger. For instance, like a woman cut in front of me at a store with a box of tampons, ice cream, and wine in her fucking cart. I wasn't about to mess with that situation. I don't need that fucking argument. I don't need that. She's looking for a reason to just fucking go off. She's depressed. She's sad. She's getting over a breakup. She's fucking, you know, hormonal. I don't want to deal with that. That I do not need that. That is not worth my time. It's not worth my time. If she was like over the top fucking crying and like, you know, I'd be like, oh my God, are you okay? Is everything going to be fine? But she was, she was hard driven. She was straightforward. She didn't want to talk to fucking anybody. I'm not wasting my time. You shouldn't waste your time. And the same goes for fucking, you know, guys that go to stores and they're sitting there with a fucking six pack and they got a black eye and they just don't want to fucking talk about it. They just want to sit there (laughs) on a fucking curb, drink their six pack before it gets fucking warm and just like smoke a pack of cigarettes in about 20 minutes. Yeah, you don't want to mess. You don't want to mess with these people. You you, you don't want to. They are not worth your time. Trust me. On the other hand, going back to exes or whatever, we all have that one person who, like, really, really fucked us over. Whether they're a lover, a companion, a family member, something. That person, like, really fucked us over and for some reason they come back into the picture. They're not worth your time. I'm not even, oh, I've changed. No, 
No, no, no. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I could be different this time. No, don't listen to all that shit that makes you rethink your evaluation of getting rid of them in the first place. You just got rid of them a year ago, five years ago, three years ago, five minutes ago. They're always going to come back. They're gonna. You're not gonna. You're gonna block them. You're gonna block their phone number, and then later on, down the road. They'll either, they'll either find you or poke you on Facebook or they have a new, you know, social media and they found you on it and they're trying to be friends or you just happen to be fucking nostalgic and you're like, hey, I wonder what so-and-so fuckface dickwad is up to. And then you go and you unblock and then you just open up a world of shit that you do not want to do. Why would you want to do that? Just enjoy the fucking good memories that you have, but don't forget why you blocked the motherfuckers in the first place. That is not worth your time. Don't do it. Stop it. No. No. Put your hand out. No. (laughs) Side note, but still relevant, okay? Bitches that smoke weed, those motherfuckers are like super chill, right? They just sit there. They're fucking munching on shit. It's those drunk bitches. Those, those, Those drunk motherfuckers, they be starting the shit, okay? They be starting the shit. So whether <laughs> I will, t- I will take this bet with any of my delinquents listening to me. Okay, any of you, you have somebody who's high as fuck. Okay, they will be zero problems for you. Zero in the moment, they will be zero problems for you. You have some drunk motherfucker like at a club or at a bar or some fucking outing, concert. I don't give a shit. Tailgating, they're a problem. They could be a problem. Watch your fucking back. You don't have no time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> no. It's no, it's drama you don't need. I guess I guess what I'm trying to say, the end all be all, the fucking final thought in this whole process of people that are not worth your time is this. Always carry a knife with you. <laughs> just redneck just redneck it up. Always have a fucking knife with you. One, because they're practical, okay, and they're awesome. And also, just in case there's, like, cheesecake, because, you know, fucking cheesecake. You know, getting through the crust with a spoon or cutting it with a fucking butter knife is not going to work. You always want to have a knife with you, okay, because there might be cheesecake, or you might actually meet someone that needs to be stabbed that is not worth your time. Now... Um, I'm going to put like a little asterisk next to that comment and I'm going to be like uh, this, not actually telling you to stab somebody. I'm just letting you know that some people are not worth your time. And if it becomes physical, which I hope it doesn't, you might have to cut a motherfucker. (laughs) And that is cool. Or there's cheesecake, but you got to be prepared for either. So moving on. And now a word. From our sponsor, BallWash.com. Keep the funk off your junk. We're making your bathroom less boring. Men's personal care products for those who work hard and play harder. No bullshit ingredients. Only the good stuff like essential oils and plant extracts. No sulfates, parabens, synthetic dyes. It's vegan and, of course, no testing on animals. Our products are developed with unique active ingredients to keep you feeling and smelling better than ever before. It's bold and never boring. Taking great care of yourself doesn't have to feel like a chore. It shouldn't be reserved for just GQ models. Finally, personal care products as awesome as you. We've got your sack. A winning trifecta of products specifically aimed to take care of your most prized possessions. The sack pack Includes everything you'll need to keep you and your boys smelling like the champion you are. So listen up, delinquents. This fucking shit is badass. It smells great. It's not that fake shit where you're all like... Because that's garbage. It's all just colognes and fake dyes and shit that makes you smell good in the moment. But does it take care of you all day? No. 
Ball Wash does. So I'll tell you this. Go to BallWash.com. Look them up on fucking Instagram. Type in at Ballsy or at Ball Wash or go to BallWash.com. Look at their products. Fill up your fucking cart. And when you want 15% off all the fucking awesomeness that you're going to get for your balls, go ahead and type in the gray area, D-A-G-R-A-Y-A-R-E-A for 15% off. Trust me. You won't regret it. At least fucking look. It won't hurt. Now I want to talk about, like, random sad shit that have just passed through my fucking brain or that I've read on Facebook or other social medias. I read something, and this girl was like, Oh, I'm thinking about staying in and watching a movie with my boyfriend. Can anyone recommend a good boyfriend? Yeah, um, how about you stop being so fucking desperate, okay? <laughs> Why can't you watch a movie by yourself? All right, because God knows you're going to want to watch a movie by yourself and you're going to want ice cream or you're going to want fucking popcorn, but you're not going to want to eat the fucking popcorn or ice cream in front of him because it makes you look like a fat ass. You just want to put the fucking sweatpants on, okay? Don't say that you need a boyfriend. You don't need a boyfriend to have fun. Put the sweats on, okay? Put on a bathrobe, sit in front of your fucking TV, open up your fucking ice cream carton and eat it right out there, motherfucker. Sprinkle it with fucking popcorn if you want to. I don't give a shit. Stop being so fucking sad. That was some... It's sad. Your sadness is fucking trickling down and bleeding into the positiveness that is us, <laughs> normal society. But in all actuality, who am I to talk? Because I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there constantly talking to my kid, right? I'm like, why are you so entertained watching other fucking children play video games on YouTube? Why, why, do, you, why do you watch this over and over and over again? Why do you feel the need instead of playing the game yourself, to actually watch other children playing a game that you have on YouTube. It doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, fast forward fucking five hours, and there I am, on the fucking couch, turning on HGTV, and I'm watching other people buy houses. (laughs) It's fucking sad. (laughs) <laughs> it's learned. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just something we learn in our childhood and we mim- mim- mimic as we go older. But when I was a kid, they didn't have this reality TV show buying houses shit. So we're just entertained by other people failing at life or something. I don't know. I don't know. Another sad thought that I had is I normally keep to myself. I normally like mind my own business unless I'm sharing with you guys. But if someone's arguing, like on Facebook, for example, I am going to read all 700 comments of that whole fucking thing. I don't know what it is about other people's problems that I find intriguing or that we find intriguing as delinquents, as society. We like other people's misery. As sad as that is, we enjoy other people's pain because it makes us feel better about our own bullshit. And as much as we don't want to admit that, it's fucking true. (laughs) It's fucking sad. And I'm laughing at it, but I mean... Seriously, what makes you feel better about yourself than other people's failures? Really? Like, there's a whole YouTube channel on fucking... It's Fail Army. Look it up. F-A-I-L Army. And there's just a whole bunch of people trying to meet their goals or trying to do a certain trick or trying to do something, you know, to make them feel better about themselves. And they completely fucking fail at it. And in some aspects, actually physically hurt themselves. And we're just like, there you go. I feel better about my day now. We're, it's sad. It's sad, but it's true. Another sad thing that I thought of was, like, society in general, like, there's a double standard, but we want equal opportunity, so when we get equal opportunity, it's still a double standard. Like, I I read, a woman said, I can hit him, but he cannot hit me. He cheated on me, which means he's an asshole, but if I cheated, it means he didn't treat me right. I can shout if I'm mad, but he's not a gentleman if he shouts. And I think I agree with her. This, uh, this this completely needs to stop. If we're looking at if we're looking at equal rights, if we're looking for equal rights, we must also ex- accept and expect equal responsibility. And the dogs agree. Ladies, for instance, like when you wanna you wanna key his car, you wanna break his windows, but he doesn't have a car, so you like just I don't know, bend his bus pass. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you shouldn't be with a guy unless he's going through some shit. He should have a car, okay? If you're if, if he's over 25 years old, he should have a car. If he's a responsible adult, he should have a car. Now, I'm not saying it needs to be a fucking Lambo, okay, or Bugatti or a Bentley or something fancy. It could be a fucking 1985 Corolla, but he should have a fucking car, 
Okay? If he's just going through shit in his life or he can't drive or, you know, he's got like a DUI once upon a time. People make mistakes. You know, you could be there for him. But if he has to take public transportation and he's treating you bad and you can't key his car because he doesn't have one or he loaned it out, just bend his bus pass or like, you know, his CTA card or you know, <laughs> the fucking the monthly train metro shit. If you're in Chicago, you just cut that shit up. You guys know. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, have you seen my, have you seen my bus pass? Have you seen my, have you seen my train card? No, honey. Uh, oh my God. I'm, what happened? Oh, it looks like you're going to have to struggle. You fuck. And that's what you get for standing me up. That one blah, blah, blah. It's called karma. It works. Speaking of karma, you will never understand the damage that you did to someone until the same thing is done to you. That's why karma exists. <laughs> it's called karma. Ta-da! Life is full of unexplained, unpredicted shit that, you know, majority of the time is, you know, sad as hell. One minute you're fucking young, you're carefree, you're at your peak physical strength, and the next thing, you know, you could feel rain coming in your knee. It's fucking, it just, it's quick. It happens quick. You have a kid, yesterday, boom, graduated high school. What the fuck? Moves fast. Moves fast. Life moves very fast. Take the quote from Ferris Bueller, okay? Just understand this. Side note, if you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you need to see Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You can't call yourself a delinquent and listen to my podcast unless you have seen <laughs> Ferris Bueller's Day Off. But he says, at the end of the movie, he says, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. So, let's end this topic on a lighter note, okay? It's sad, but it's funny. Like, we can't have flying cars, right? It's sad. I want flying cars. Back to the Future called it a long fucking time ago that we should have had flying cars by now. But we can't, and it's sad. And let me tell you why. We can't have flying cars because y'all can't keep your fucking gas tanks off E. The last thing we fucking need is cars falling out of the sky, and you're like, oh, I know my car. I know my car. I know my car. I know it says E, but I got at least 35 more miles to go before I got to put gas in it. Yeah, we're going to give you a flying car so you can fucking, you know, kamikaze your fucking flying car into some guy's backyard. No, 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 no. <laughs> Which brings me to the topic of life in general, okay? Life is like flying. You are going to hit fucking turbulence before you hit cruising altitude. Just make sure you have enough gas in the tank before you fucking fall out of the sky, okay? That was a good segue. And I'm very proud of myself right now. And I am patting myself on the back for that one. So, well done, Sarge. Well done. When it comes to life, when it comes to braggers, when it comes to your, your random thoughts, when people are not worth your time, when things are just fucking sad, when it comes to life, sometimes you just have to be done. Fucking done. You don't have to be mad. You don't have to be upset. You don't need to seek vengeance or revenge or get even or wait for karma to come around. Sometimes you just need to be like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm just fucking done. And that's it. And you could live with that. And that should be okay. But life isn't all, you know, fucking sadness and darkness and death and, you know, bad vibes. You have to appreciate the good stuff. There's always going to be good stuff and you have to take it with a grain of salt because you never know when your luck is going to turn around or when your pleasant moments are going to fade. So live in your moments and adapt and overcome and learn from them. Like one of my favorite feelings in the world is laughing with someone and realizing halfway through how much I enjoy them and their time and their presence. I don't have to spend fucking thousands of dollars. I don't need to be doing this, that, or any particular thing to have a good time. It's just enjoying somebody's company. It, I don't care if I'm fucking sitting on a couch in my fucking sweatpants. I don't give a fuck if I'm at, you know, a fucking gal or a five-star event wearing a tuxedo, which I haven't been to, but if anybody wants to take me to one, I'll sign me up, because I will gladly be all over your shoulder. I will be your man candy, so to speak, if you want to take me to any event. I need to get a tux, but uh, I have decided that next time I do get a tux, I will not be renting it. I am going to own it, and I will always forever stay that size I will not get bigger, I will not get smaller, I will always fit my tux. Yeah, I don't know. I went off on a little bit of a side tangent, and that's okay. The best uh, safe word in life is meatloaf. Okay? Because it means that you would do anything for love. Anything. 
but you won't do that. So if it gets too hard, just be like meatloaf. <laughs> I'm done. I can't do this. I can't do it. We as human beings, you know, try to incorporate ourselves into other societies or other genres or other aspects of like pop culture or scholars or, you know, blue collar workers. We try to fit in in every aspect that we possibly can. We try to do whatever we can to adapt and overcome to certain situations and blah, blah, blah. And we read a lot and we have fucking, you know, body fucking issues because we see what the standard should be. First of all, there's no fucking one standard for your body type. Okay. I'm technically overweight, but I'm like five, seven, 200 pounds of break your face is pretty much what I am. If a pit bull was a human, it would be me. So I've been told. But I'm just saying we read a lot of shit and then it just makes us feel bad about ourselves. We need we need to be told by people like us and to hang out with people like us. But we still need to be able to adapt and fit in with people that are not like us, but still see that they are not complete pieces of shit. They just grew up differently, different trials and tribulations, different society, different norms. You know, some are fancy and they're bougie and they're caviar and some are fucking, you know, overalls and Paps Blue Ribbon. Does that make anybody better than anybody else? No. But does that mean Paps fucking Blue Ribbon can't hang out with the caviar tuxes? Normally, no. Normally they can't. But there are those few out there that can. And I'd like to think of me as being one of those people. I could, any circumstance, any situation, I could usually fit in with. But I know when I'm reading something when it comes to pop culture or the higher ups or the higher class or the middle class or the lower class, I could figure out what's bullshit and what isn't. Like after reading the negative, after reading like negative effects on like smoking and drinking, I have decided to completely fucking stop reading altogether. <laughs> <laughs> completely idiotic, all right? You're going to be like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, you shouldn't do this. You think we fucking, we know, we know the difference, all right? People live life the way they want to fucking live life. Do we know that drinking is bad for you? Yeah. Do we know that smoking is bad for you? Yeah. And then you got the people be like, oh, you know, I'm going to smoke a cigar. Oh, cigars are bad for you. Yeah, so are cigarettes. Yeah, we're making the choice on our own. Drinking's bad for you. You think fucking alcoholics don't know that they're fucking slowly killing themselves because their liver is fucking turning into a raisin and then they get jaundice? It's just personal fucking choice. Okay? Addiction, honestly, in my opinion, personal choice. Personal fucking choice. You can stop doing anything whenever the fuck you want to. Alcoholism is a little bit different because your body depends on it and you have to slowly wean yourself off of it to get yourself back up, blah, blah, blah. Because your body gets used to having so much alcohol in its system at one point in time. So when you take it away, it's not good for you. But yes, I know I'm going off on a fucking super tangent. Sorry. The end all be all in life is, you know, be somebody who makes everybody feel like somebody. You don't want to make somebody feel like shit. You don't want to be the bragger who makes people second guess their life or their life choices. You want to be someone like a role model, a friend, someone that you could be, you could be looked up to as an ideal person or a standard of what people would like to be like. It doesn't mean they have to be exactly like you, but you know, you want to be somebody that makes everybody feel like somebody feel like they matter. Never put people down. Treat everybody, strangers, family, friends, enemies, like they fucking matter. Because you don't know what the fuck they've been through. Okay, maybe not enemies so much. Because they have earned the fucking shit kicking and the karma that is behest to them in the future. So just deal with that. Fuck them. Fuck those feet. <laughs> fuck those people. <laughs> Hope you fall down some stairs, motherfucker. Delinquents, listen to me. Because I love you. And hopefully you love me. And I miss you. So listen, if you found out you were dying, would you be nicer? Would you love more? Would you try to do something new? Well, listen up. You are. We all are. Everybody is fucking dying. The only thing that is guaranteed with birth is death. So make the best of it while you fucking can. Life is short. Be kind to everyone you meet. You do not know their fucking battles. They might have a teenager at home. Or they might have their own fucking dramas. Anybody that has a teenager at home knows life is not perfect. You can never mold your child to be what you want them to be. They will make their own choices and they will disappoint you. And life fucking sucks. But eventually time goes on 
and hopefully you're around for it, and you see that their choices made them who they are. I am who I am because I didn't listen to my fucking parents. And some say that's a good thing, and some say it's probably a bad thing. But you live with it, and you adapt, and you fucking just breathe, and you wake up, and you go to sleep, and you live your days. It doesn't matter how old you are, you could always learn something new, you could always try something new, you could always look at something in a different light. Like, for instance, I just heard cum referred to as high fructose porn syrup, and my life will never, ever be the same. <laughs> ever. And now, it is time for... The, the Dirty, Dirty Dad, Dad joke, joke of the, of the week. week! Daddy joke. Why aren't dogs good dancers? Why aren't dogs good dancers? Because they have two left feet. Because, <laughs> get it? You got four feet, two of them are left. You say you got two left feet if you're a bad dancer. You gotta, that's a, that's a dad joke that you gotta, you gotta have a little bit of a brain. But yes, two left feet. That's a, that's, a, that's classic. It's a good one. Good one. I like it. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Now, how do you get a nun pregnant? How do you get a nun pregnant? You dress her up as an altar boy. <laughs> Woof. Oh, man, it's fucking horrible. All right, my delinquents, that's it for me this week. Oh, wow, that's a dress her up as an altar boy. Wow, okay, I'm going to get a lot of backlash from my Catholic friends. But uh, it is what it is. It's just a joke. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. But I need you guys to do me a favor, okay? I need you to spread the love, all right? I need you to hit me up on social media. Go to thegrayarea.com. Go to fucking thegrayarea1 at uh, Instagram or Twitter. The Gray Area, the number one. And, like, hit me up. Share my shit. Fucking go to my Facebook page and, you know, share the freaking podcast with them. All right? Can you do that? Also, we got merch. So if you want to wear some D... If you want to wear some The Gray Area merchandise, like a shirt, or a tote, or a purse, or a laptop bag, or some pillows, I don't give a fuck what you want, okay? I got it for you. All you got to do is go to tpublic.com, T-E-E-P-U-B-L-I-C.com, and search D-G-A. For the gray area, and you will see all my merch there. You'll see my shirts. You'll see like some artist submitted stuff from fans. I got two things in there. From I got a zombie cat in there. Let's say like a Cheshire cat, and I also got like a bag hanging on the wall because you know, hey, it's fan submitted. So if you submit me art to the gray area at gmail.com, I will fucking make your art our merch, and it will be fantastic. And you. As a delinquent could be all over the world on the backs of any delinquent anywhere. So, all delinquents old and new, I want to thank you for stopping out. And I'm sorry I took so long, but I hope you had a great 4th of July weekend, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. And uh, to all you moms and parents out there, the kids will be going back to school in just about a month. Hopefully. So, you'll get your days back. Right? Fingers crossed? All right, my delinquents. I love you. And you love me, and I miss you, and you miss me, and I'll talk to you guys next time. All right? Bye!